Some words that you need to take note of are going to be the words filibuster, revolution, and nationalism. So a filibuster is an adventurer who engages, that means is involved in, and organizes private rebellious activities in a foreign country. A revolution is a movement to bring about change. Sometimes we see this in the form of a war. Sometimes we see it in writing documents that make changes. Nationalism can have two separate definitions. An extreme love or patriotism for your homeland or your country, or it could be a movement to become an independent nation. You're going to see both of these whenever we talk about the Mexican national era. The causes of the Mexican Revolution. When we talk about the Mexican national era, we're talking about whenever Mexico becomes its own nation. And in order to do that, they had to stop being part of Spain and win independence to become their own country. So the reasons why they're going to try to break away from Spain are one, New Spain was too far away from Spain to protect the borderlands in Texas from the Native American attacks and also possible invasions from neighboring countries. Remember, there's still some paranoia that the United States is going to invade and take over Texas specifically. The second reason, New Spain wanted to govern themselves. That means they wanted to be able to make their own choices and live their own life without having to try to ask a king first who was living across the Atlantic Ocean. So communication was very slow. They weren't able to get decisions very quickly. So they wanted to be able to decide how they lived their daily life and how they were governed. Some rules that Spain was making at that time made sense. But some of the rules that were being made applied really only to Spain in the old world. They made no sense in New Spain. Number three, Spain was not treating New Spain, which is Mexico, fairly because they were not treating the Spanish citizens living in New Spain as Spanish citizens. They were treating them almost as lesser citizens than those who were living in Spain. Because the people that were living in Spain were able to exercise their rights more than the people that were living in New Spain and Mexico. All right, so the leader of the revolution, the main person you need to be able to remember is going to be a man named Father Miguel Hidalgo. He is a padre, so he's a leader over a church. And he's given a pretty big church to begin with. We call that a rectory. But he is going to end up getting punished for reading certain materials that were banned at the time. These were all free thinking materials. So different types of documents and books that taught how to have a government where all of the people get to make decisions. These free thinking materials were different books written by John Locke. He studied the US Declaration of Independence, the US Constitution, and other writings by the founders that wrote those two documents. His work will inspire the filibusters and he will be known as the father of the Mexican Revolution because he is going to be the one person who says what everybody else is feeling. That feeling of not being satisfied with what your government is doing. All right, another person that you need to know about is a guy named Philip Nolan. He was a Mustang trader and some people say he was a spy for the U.S. government. So on the side of being a Mustang trader, that's something that we know for a fact. Philip Nolan, he was a U.S. citizen. He was known as being a Mustang trader. There are documents that prove it. And he was given permission by the Spanish government to enter into Texas to be able to round up and trade Mustangs. So was he a spy for the U.S. government? We don't really have a, a whole lot of evidence that is going to completely prove him guilty on this account. But Philip Nolan has a connection to, or had a connection to, the U.S. Army commander of the frontier. And that's going to make him look suspicious because the Spaniards are going to be suspicious of anyone tied with the U.S. government, especially the U.S. military. And if he's tied to the Army commander of the frontier, that means the people that are in charge of the military close to Texas. So Spain is going to ban him from going back into Texas. Filibusters and pirates. So some of the ones, that, some of the filibusters that we're going to talk about, they'll be a little bit different from Philip Nolan because they are going to be blatant filibusters. They're going to be very bold about what they do. 
They're not going to be sneaky like a spy would be. So let's talk about the pirates first. There's going to be a pirate named Jean Lafitte and a pirate named Michael Ori. They are both going to be pirates in the Gulf of Mexico. They are going to frequently help the rebellion by raiding Spanish ships. James Long is one of the most well-known filibusters. He thought that Texas should be either independent or part of the United States. And then Gutierrez and McGee. Gutierrez and McGee are going to be a Mexican and a U.S. filibuster who teamed up to fight for independence against Spain. So situations and events, how does this all play out? Our timeline is going to look like this. So the mindset of the Spanish government. Spain, like I said, was suspicious of Americans. They were under the impression that the U.S. wanted to take Texas from them. So Spain will see every action from the U.S. citizens and their government as a move towards taking Texas from them. So these actions that are going to draw attention are going to be Philip Nolan frequently crossing the U.S. Spanish border. Andrew Jackson followed Native Americans into Spanish territory without permission in those Indian wars that he's part of. American citizens who didn't agree with the adams onis Treaty are going to take Spanish lands they claim as their own. They're going to completely ignore the paperwork drawn up and that line that was drawn. They're going to cross over that line. And then filibusters moving into New Spain from the United States. Most of those filibusters are going to be moving into Texas, specifically in Nacogdoches. Philip Nolan. Nolan had been given permission, like we said before, by the Spanish government to enter Texas to capture and export wild Mustangs for his job as a Mustang trader. But Spain grew increasingly wary, that means suspicious, of Nolan because of things like, well, he continually visited General James Wilkinson back in the United States whenever he crossed the border back over from Texas into the U.S. He talked with General James Wilkinson and General James Wilkinson was the U.S. Army commander of the U.S. frontier, so that territory that is super close to Texas. This means he was connected to the U.S. government. So Spain warned Nolan that his rights to enter Texas were revoked and if he came to Texas again, he would be arrested. Nolan went back to Texas. So, of course, because they said he would be arrested, um, he sets up near Waco with 17 men, and the new Spanish officials attempted to arrest him. A fight broke out, and Nolan was killed. Father Hidalgo, the father of this revolution, is going to be a padre. That means he leads a church. But he was given a very small rectory. That means... A responsibility over a church. So the church he was in charge of, he sent out into the middle of nowhere after he'd actually been given a pretty big sized church in the middle of everywhere, um, very close to the capital. He sent out into the middle of nowhere because of his beliefs and his reading. There he establishes a community with equal rights for all, especially those Native Americans because they were treated as lessers. He creates an equal rights environment for everybody living in his community and as the situation with Spain grew even more oppressive with those main three reasons why they wanted to break away he's going to organize and arm the people so he cries out from his church steps and encourages the people to revolt he preaches a sermon of death to bad government and he even ends up saying death to the Spaniards this was called the Grito de Dolores. From there, Hidalgo led a mob to attack a local military holding. It was sort of successful, but also sort of a failure. Although he led the people to rise and rebel, he was captured by the Spanish troops and he was executed. Now, his leadership is what's really going to start the fight for the Mexican Revolution. So even though that one attack is not successful, it is going to spark this whole revolution. He's going to say everything that people are feeling and give people courage to fight. 
the Gutierrez McGee expedition. So after the U.S. had control of the neutral territory, Augustus McGee left the U.S. Army. He had, a, he had been part of the U.S. military, but he's going to leave the U.S. Army and he's going to head towards Texas. He will then meet Bernardo Gutierrez de Lara. So Gutierrez followed Father Miguel Hidalgo's teachings. So together they will organize a group for a filibustering expedition. They were a group of U.S., Tejano, and Mexican men who set out to stir up the revolution. They arrived in Nacogdoches in 1812 and declared Texas independent from Spain. They marched on the Presidio at La Bahia. They were attacked by the Spanish soldiers there. McGee is going to be killed there, but the filibusters were actually successful. They defeated the Spanish forces at the Battle of Salado and occupied San Antonio. That means they had control of San Antonio at one point, which is a very important city. They are going to end up putting Gutierrez in charge as their new leader, the Battle of Medina. After the expedition and they occupied San Antonio, another battle took place close to the Medina River. The expedition was defeated, though, and almost all of the filibusters were killed. The Galveston Pirates. So at this point, uh, Michael Ory took over Galveston Island and became the governor of the island during the revolution. He left to help the rebels fight against Spain, though, and whenever he left, another pirate named Jean Lafitte took over Galveston in Ori's place as the leader. He rebuilt the settlements that had been abandoned whenever people left to go help these filibusters. Now they worked to thwart Spanish ships trying to reach New Spain and pirated goods to supply the rebels. The Long Expedition. James Long was married to Jane Wilkinson. He had been in the Battle of New Orleans in the War of 1812 and he heard the things that were happening in New Spain. So he was stirred up by the revolutionary talks of the filibusters and Father Miguel Hidalgo in Texas, and he decided to join these people. His focus was on Texas independence from Spain and started his work in Nacogdoches. He set up posts along the Brazos and Trinity River and asked Jean Lafitte for help. He asked the pirate for help. His wife, Jane, followed him to Galveston and stayed there while he continued to La Bahia to organize this filibustering expedition. He was captured by the Spanish soldiers and killed by a prison guard in a Mexico City prison. So what about Jane? Jane stayed behind in Galveston, but was soon pretty much abandoned because the pirates had to leave to keep helping the rebels. So pirates don't stay in one place for too long, so she's going to end up being on the island to fend for herself along with her daughter, Anne, and they had a slave named Kyan. The things that they were up against were, well, the winter that uh, year was kind of harsh. They had wild animals trying to attack them, and Karen Kawa Native Americans trying to attack as well. And on top of all of that, Jane was also pregnant at the time. And she gave birth in Texas. So she's going to become known as the mother of Texas because she's the first person to really give birth to an Anglo citizen in Texas. She returned to Mississippi, that's where she's from, as a widow because she found out about her husband dying. But we have not seen the end of her in Texas. So eventually she will come back. We'll talk about the conditions of how she comes back to Texas later on in our story. Spain under new management. So things were going as well in Spain in the old world as they were in New Spain, which is not well at all. There's a lot of chaos at this time because there's a lot of rebellion being stirred. So if there's unrest in the new world, then you can probably just about guarantee there's probably some kind of conflict some kind of rebellious activities going on in the old world as well. So there were two different groups who were fighting over how Spain should be run back in Spain. In the end, a new king is going to be put in place. He will be King Ferdinand VII. Whenever the new leadership comes in, 
he is going to end up losing New Spain. They will declare independence, they will win independence, and they will become Mexico. So in 1821, Mexico won independence from Spain.